What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. This is for the Fuji fanboys, fangirls. I probably just offended somebody. So I just checked out Fuji Rumors this morning and apparently Adobe's launched Camera Raw version 11.2 and this is for the Fuji people because apparently it's supposed to help with the X-Trans processing. Um, if you've been shooting with Fuji for a while then you've probably known about the issue of kind of like the wormy grain and artifacting and stuff like that in the raw files. And you really only get that when you're using Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop because it's using Adobe Camera Raw to process those raw files. And a lot of people have started to switch to Capture One because they find that it looks better. I've been using Photoshop for years now and uh, I've just gotten used to the look of that. And uh, you know, not normally people are gonna be zooming in to 300% to look at images like I am when I'm doing retouching and stuff like that. So I never really found it to be that big of a problem. Uh, my clients and the people that I shoot with have never really had any issues with it. Um, but it is a known issue and apparently this is supposed to help. So it's going to improve crisp detail, improve color rendering, more accurate rendition of edges, and fewer artifacts. So. This should help a little bit. They've also added a new option in Camera Raw called Enhanced Details, and we're gonna take a look at that as well. We're gonna take a look at that, and uh, I'm gonna open up about five different images from five different Fuji cameras that I've shot with. So we're gonna take a look at the X-Pro2, X-T2, X-100F, X-H1, and the X-T3. I don't know if it's really gonna make a difference across those older sensors because they were all basically the same, the same processor, uh, the X-Trans 3 sensor. But we'll take a look at it anyway, and uh, yeah, let's jump in. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at is an image from the X-T3. This is in the old version of Camera Raw. So, well, it's the most current version before the newest version. So looking at the image, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a great shot. Um, just like any Fuji image, I'm always impressed with how it looks. You can go in here and you can add your film simulations afterwards. So we can go to Classic Chrome and I'm gonna close that out. But what we really wanna look at is the artifacting and the grain because these are some of the things that people are concerned about when they shoot with Fuji. It's never really been that big of a deal. I've learned to get over it. But if we zoom in here to who knows what the percentage, so I'm at 200%, there's 300%. You're never really gonna zoom in to 300% to look at an image, but as you can see, it does have wormy grain. And there's these random lines through it, which you know would be considered artifacting, uh, especially something like this. But you don't really see this on any other camera system other than Fuji. And uh, this is the same with the X-Pro2 and the X-T2. So I'm gonna close this out and we'll open up an X-T2 image. So this is an image shot on the X-T2. Again, if I go in here and add classic chrome to the way that I would have shot this image, close this up. So again, if I go in here at 300%, you start to see that kind of wormy looking grain. You really notice it kind of in the shadow areas. Okay, so I'm gonna open up an image from the X-Pro2, which is, I pretty much shot this almost three years ago. Um, going in here, I'm not gonna apply the film simulation in case you're like, oh Lee, that's the reason why it's got weird artifacting. We'll zoom in here again to 300%. But you can definitely see in like areas like this, it's got some weird artifacting and weird grain. But let's go with the X-H1 because it's supposed to have the newer of the X-Trans 3 sensors, even though it's the same, just as IBIS. So again, we'll zoom in here at 300%. And you can see in the hand here, we got some of that wormy grain, these random little artifacts like this. And I'd say the hardest part about this type of stuff is that, you know, you're dealing with retouching and stuff and you don't really have a unified texture, like a unified grain. You have weird stuff like this. And I think that bothers a lot of people I'm gonna come back in a bit after I've installed the new version of Camera Raw and I guess the new version of Photoshop. All right, so I just installed the new Camera Raw update and Photoshop CC 2019. We're gonna open up an XT3 file here first and then I'll kind of go back through some of the other images I already opened. We're gonna take a look at the grain again and just see how it's processing these images. So I'm gonna open up this in CC 2019 and we have the image here. I'm gonna zoom in again to 300%. I don't really see a difference. I'm still seeing a lot of this wormy grain. And that's okay because this really isn't the final stage of what they've added. So they've added this thing called Enhanced Details. We go up here to the little menu button and we're gonna click Enhance Details. And it's gonna say Enhanced Details uses machine learning to improve details and reduce artifact in most raw files. Um, and then this is gonna save it out as a DNG. So we're gonna click Enhance. And down here at the bottom left, you see it's processing. My computer is really fast, so for some people this might actually take a long time. I should probably try it on my laptop to see if there's a difference, but um, as you can see here, it made a new file. 
it says XT, I mean, I named this file XT3 just so I could remember what it's from, but it's dash enhanced. And if we go here to the original folder where this stuff is, you can see it created a DNG. So now we've got two versions of the raw file. We've got the original one and the new DNG that's processed. Let's go in and see if there's any difference. Uh, let's try and find an area that I was looking at before, which was up in here. Okay, so it's it's tightened up some of the grain. It isn't as wormy, but you can see there's like sharp areas and not sharp areas. I don't know if this is worse, but technically if you zoomed out, you'd never notice it. It would actually make this image look really sharp because it's tightening the pixels up. Uh, some of the wormy longer looking pixels would be now nice and tight. And uh, this looks great. Um, again, like no one zooming into 300%. If we zoom in here to 300% again, let's compare it to the old image because I still have that here. We're going 300%. All right, so here we are looking at the original raw file. Again, these weird long wormy looking grain artifacts. And if we click on the newly enhanced image, those are pretty much gone. It did clean that up quite a bit. Uh, back and forth again. So here is the original file. And then here is the enhanced image. So. I don't know, it's, I mean, it doesn't look perfect. You can see like random, I don't know how well this is gonna show up on YouTube, but you can see like a random patch of sharpened pixels here, and then still some of the mushy looking pixels here. But overall, it does look quite a bit better and it might make it easier to do retouching and things like that. Uh, let's look at an older file. Let's look at something from like an X-Pro2. Okay, so opening up the X-Pro2 image here. Again, we're gonna go up top here where it says film strip. This whole area is kind of new. We're gonna go enhance details. We don't really get an option to adjust how much of it's gonna do. Click Enhance, again it's loading down at the bottom left here. And there we go, we've got our enhanced image. I'm gonna zoom in to 300%. So, taking a look at the original raw file here, we can see how the grain structure is, these random artifacts in the grain, which they're calling wormy grain. We cut back to the enhanced image, and it's really cleaned up. Like the pixels are nice and tight now. We're not having any weird artifacting. And uh, this is kind of exciting. It's cool that Adobe's doing something new like this. Um, I'm, I have a feeling it's because they lost a lot of customers to Capture One, Fuji customers specifically. Um, zooming back out here again, this, you know, it, when you're zoomed out this far, you're never really gonna notice the grain structure. All right, so just out of pure curiosity, I wanna open this up in Capture One 12. Take a look at how it's rendering the noise and taking a look at the grain structure. Uh, I got open in Photoshop right here. This is the newest version of Photoshop with the newest version of Camera Raw. And we can see there's still weird artifacting and wormy looking grain in here. But if we go into Capture One, I'm zoomed in at 200%. It really smooths out the noise and it looks kind of like a watercolor at this stage. Um, I'm pretty sure that you'd have to sharpen this image up quite a bit um, to bring back that sharpness and detail really. If we go back to Photoshop, you can see that this looks quite a bit sharper, even though it's got that weird noisy grain structure. So if we go up here and enhance this image, enhance details. So this is the enhanced details now where it fixed up some of that wormy noise. And we go into Capture One here and you can see Capture One looks kind of smeary and soft. And now Adobe Camera Raw looks nice and sharp. So you could also denoise this and smooth it out and then add sharpening after and you'd probably get kind of the similar effect that Capture One's doing. In Capture One, we're gonna have to add some sharpening to bring back some of that detail. All right, so if we add some sharpening to this, I don't know if this is the correct way of doing it since I don't really use Capture One that often. Um, it's starting to look a little bit sharper but I'm starting to see some weird artifacting coming back in. Uh, obviously, we're at 200%, well 100% now, you can kind of notice it. Anyway, that's just a quick look into Capture One to see if the Adobe stuff has made any real improvement next to Capture One. And it does look like it's sharpening up the pixels, which is kind of cool, because I know a lot of people have asked me in the past, how do I sharpen up my Fuji RAW files? And I don't usually do it because I always find that it looks good the way it is. But there's people out there that are super picky on how their 300% pixels look. And uh, this might change your mind to go back to Adobe if you like the Adobe suite. Um, this is how I work, this is my workflow, and this is, you know, kind of nice to have. Um, I don't really shoot with Fuji that much anymore, but I am thinking about getting the X-T30 uh, to have around as a fun camera. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. If you learned something, well, give this video a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and see you guys in the next one.